Welcome to a brand new season of Snowmobiler Television. We're excited to get back on the snow and we've got a great season planned out for you. But to start things off in this show, we've got a travel guide on deck in case you're looking for some snowmobile destination ideas for this upcoming season. And we catch up with Red Bull and Levi Lavalley at the first ever running of Sledhammers. So let's hit the gas. STV is brought to you by Yamaha. Conquer snow with Yamaha. Ultimax Belts. Performance driven, performance proven. Ford F-Series Canada's best selling line of trucks for 53 years. Tough, smart, capable. When Red Bull puts on an event, they do it with a certain style because they go all in to create something epic. And that's what they've done here for the first running of Red Bull's Sledhammers. Now, Sledhammers is a snowmobile race open to everybody, but at the end of the day, there can be only one winner. One of the best things about this event is the unknown because there's never been a track design quite like this one ever before and it's open to everyone to compete. From pros to amateurs riding everything from snowcross sleds to mountain sleds to trail sleds, they've all got to send it up the hill. La première édition du sled Hammer, on va avoir des compétiteurs de toutes les catégories. C'est pas nécessairement pas divisé en catégories comme on est habitué, pro, semi-pro et débutant. Là, c'est une classe ouverte, ouverte à tous, autant les hommes que les femmes. On compétitionne ensemble. Il euh, n'y a pas de règle de moteur non plus, aucune règle pour les modifications. C'est vraiment une course open, ouverte aux hommes et aux femmes. Euh, la formule, comment on va fonctionner pour le premier événement du Sled Hammer, ça va être par euh, élimination. On a une chance, donc c'est do or die. Hein? Ça passe ou ça casse. On a une chance chacun. Le matin, on va avoir 64 noms dans un bocal. On va aller à la pige, on va piger les 64 qui va s'affronter en premier. Et on a une chance. Donc, on se rend en haut en premier ou sinon euh, on serre la machine, la journée se termine là. It's a kind of a different way to uh, have a race in the snowmobile. We try to merge the hill climb and the snowcross together. So we have super gnarly curves and uh, it's a totally different uh, so it's going to be pretty interesting for the weekend, that's for sure. What's really cool about Red Bull Sled Hammers and just Red Bull events in general is they, they just do them so, so superior to everyone else. You know, they look at all details from the setup to the course to how they build the course, who's involved. They always try to get the best people to do it. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to be a little bit involved with this, with, you know, the course. I went out and did a lot of the testing for the jumps and stuff and to fine tune it so that it, it was good for snowmobilers and, and safe for some of the, the riders that are less experienced. So. It's really neat for you know the competitors out here to be able to compete at a Red Bull event. I think Red Bull has been able to to showcase all these amazing different events and different sports, and they do it at such a top level. It's it's quite an honor to be able to compete in one. So a lot of the snowmobilers that are here, you know, they're just excited to be here. Just I mean, they're not looking to win. They're not looking to do anything other than have a good time, and that's what Red Bull's all about. They're about a good time, and they do a great job at it. It's uh, it's really neat to be able to have 
a Red Bull snowmobile event like Red Bull Sled Hammers. And you know, the people around here seem to be extremely excited about it. It's a track that's really impressive. It's really going to take us to see what's new. It's going to be a new opportunity. That's why I think there's a lot of people here and different different sports that are related to the mountain bike today. Écoute, moi, je suis super contente d'avoir la chance d'être la seule participante femme au Red Bull Sled Hammer. D'après moi, ça va, ça va être une vraiment belle, une vraiment belle journée. Puis, je te dirais, l'événement va avoir une grande ampleur, va avoir beaucoup, beaucoup de spectateurs et autant de participants. Donc, ça va être vraiment une journée impressionnante. Hein. Je te dirais, en ce moment, je le sens quand même comme un petit peu une pression. Les filles, les filles qui sont sur le site m'en parlent vraiment beaucoup. Ils viennent me voir, ils m'encouragent, ils me félicitent. Donc, je veux, je veux pas les laisser tomber. Je vais donner mon 100%. <laughs> that was the main goal about the Red Bull Sled Hammer, is to make everyone together. So we are going to have a lots of different kind of sleds. Of course, we're going to have some people with race sled, snowcross typical race sled. Uh, we're going to have mountain guys that are going to run maybe a little bit longer sled. So I think right now it's a technical, technical course, so we'll see. For me, it's really exciting. I've never really done any kind of uh, races like that. I've done a lot of drags, and usually I'm a mountain rider. I like deep powder and stuff like that. So this is new to me, and I'm really excited. I have a Pro RMK 163 track. I think I'll be at a disadvantage since uh, this is going to be like a first time racing a big track like this. And uh, the sled's not really made for all these big jumps and landings. I mean, it's definitely stressful, but it looks so fun to hit, and yeah, I'm just going to send it today. So stick around, because we're about to hit the gas. Competition here at Red Bull Sled Hammers is head-to-head, -head, first to the finish eliminations, which means as a rider, you've got one shot. Either you win it, or you load it up on the trailer and go home. And that means every round is super important to every rider, and you've got to put it all on the line. The Rebel Sledhammers is really unique in the fact that it's a head-to-head -head competition. So there's two identical courses built side by side and they have like over under so you cross lines like that. I mean it, and to be able to duplicate the two lines all the way up this course was pretty impressive. So hats off to the track builders. But to be able to have like that snowmobile event, have those cool lines and have it have that it, I mean, it looks almost like a like a uh, snowboard or, or ski course, except for we're going the other way. We're going up the hill, and you know that's what's really fun about it. And you know the jumps, they're all like manicured, like perfect. You know, it looks like if you imagine the perfect course, that's what what it is. You know, it's just perfect sides cut out the whole thing. So it's really neat to be able to do that. And for for the riders, you know, to be able to be on a course like that, I mean, that's like that's an experience in itself. With the head-to-head -head format of the racing here at Red Bull Sledhammers, to win here, a rider is going to have to have that perfect day. That's one of the hardest parts about Red Bull Sledhammers is it's unknown. It's the first time, so we don't know, you know, what sled, what setup, how you're going to do it. And that's the unique part is like you come in going, well, I think this is going to work. And until you experience for the first time and you go, oh, I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have came with this setup. So that, that adds to the fun. But overall, you know, regardless if you don't have the right setup, if you don't have the right, you know, style of sled, go out there and have fun. And that's what the guys are doing. This is a lot like what we see with Red Bull Straight Rhythm for the dirt bikes. It's, it's nothing that I've ever seen before for sleds. I've always thought about it for when I saw it on the dirt bikes and I said, to my dad and everyone else like how awesome would it be if we could do that for sleds and they came out with it and the track is almost identical to what they did for the track preview which I found pretty cool to see and it's it's going to be tricky that's for sure all the, the the jumps and then the stop goes and the slaloms 
it's a lot of stuff that I haven't done before either, so it's gonna be cool, it's gonna be a lot of fun. As of right now, it's the strategy is looking at what side is gonna be the faster choice, because we do get to pick as we move along through the ranks, and that's gonna be something that you want the advantage of having the faster lane. It's kind of hard to tell right now, but as of looking at the track, it looks like the right side is gonna be the choice lane for everybody, but as far as something that I'm gonna to have to try to overcome is the slalom sections, because obviously we, we never really do that. So it's gonna be a lot of quick turning, having that power from the sled kind of pull through and basically tackle that as fast as possible and get to the top of the hill. Uh, it's something that is like a lifelong like dream. I didn't think we were gonna get in and it's, it's cool that we got here today and we're actually living it and walking the track and it, it's awesome. All the branding everywhere, it's so cool to be here and the event is so properly done it's very professional i'm very like just stoked to be here and even just get to compete competing at or being involved in a red bull event has got something special about it they really do bring some style to the party so keep an eye out for the next running of the red bull sled hammers I would definitely recommend coming out if you're thinking about competing. You know, the one thing that's nice about it is, yes, there are some jumps out there, but you don't have to do them if you don't want to. They've got a lane around them. And, you know, I talked to a few gentlemen prior to the event, and they're like, man, I, got, I go to work on Monday. And, you know, I can't, like, I can't bang myself up. And I said, dude, just go out there and have fun. Go around the jumps, hit the ones that you feel comfortable with, and just go around the other ones. Just have fun doing it, you know? And being able to be on a course like this is, you know, this is a once a lifetime for a lot of people. So, you know, I would I would definitely recommend doing it. And the things, the, the plans for the future is to, you know, they're talking about possibly having, instead of just one class, having an amateur class and a pro class and, you know, doing a lot of different things. So, you know, as time goes on, I think the event's only gonna get better and better. Coming up a little later on in the show, we're going to tell you about some of our favorite places to ride across Canada. Over the last couple of seasons of snowmobiler television, we've had the chance to go on a number of bucket list type destinations. Now it's a ton of work bringing you the stories from these places, but thankfully we're up to the task. <laughs> That's kind of a lie. It doesn't really feel like work at all. In fact, it's an honor and a privilege every chance we get to go to one of these destinations. But one of the things that we make sure of is that these places are places that you can go to and ride your own snowmobile at. So here's a selection of some of our favorites. First up on our list is our trip from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario up to Wawa through Halfway Haven. For this ride we unloaded in Search Mount just outside the Sioux to begin our tour with the Haven as our first overnight stop. There's basically nothing between Search Mount and Wawa other than Halfway Haven so there's no way to get lost. But you do have to ride about 160 kilometers between fuel stops to make it. Now you could get to Wawa with just a gas and go without overnighting at Halfway Haven, but it's the Haven and its proprietor Sean that make this destination stand out in my memory. Halfway has a rustic charm to it just like Sean. The whole place makes you feel welcome and at home right away. Plus the food will make you wish you had a bigger stomach just to eat more. And when Sean asks you if you want him to murder your burger and bacon, don't think about it, just say yes. Halfway Haven's legendary, like last night's burger. <laughs> If somebody's hungry, I'm, I, can, I can hurt you. I just want everybody to feel pleased. I didn't think it was possible to eat a half pound hamburger with a pound of bacon on it, but you can. I, I destroyed that burger. It was delicious. Uh, it's all handmade and uh, Sean is a fantastic cook. Once you arrive in Wawa, we stayed at the Motor Inn. Now Wawa is a decent sized Northern Ontario town with everything you need as a snowmobile traveler even a decent nightlife that included bowling for us on our one night in town. Then if you're up to it, you can hook up with Russ from Top Secret Boondocking for an off-trail adventure. Basically the secret is out. Um, people far and wide know about it and it's great because we've got 
thousands of acres that are untouched and uh, it's good some people are finally getting to ride them. Moving one province over to the right, it was hard to pinpoint just one location in Quebec, so I'm going to give you a few. Gems can be found throughout the province, but two in particular that stand out are the Balbazar Sauvage in Abitibi Temiskaming and Le Manoir Richelieu in the Charlevoix region, a few hours' drive past Quebec City. Both offer a very high level snowmobiling experience, but at reasonable ish prices. Uh, so you can snowmobile in the area of Quebec City. You can also snowmobile in the area of Saguenay, which is north of Quebec City, and then do the buckle, if you want, towards Charlevoix and then head back to Quebec City. So this is like sort of the uh, snowmobile destination uh, that you can get to, and there's lots, lots of snow. Uh, you can enjoy a stay at the S Hotel, visit it, it is quite unique. We may think that it's going to, going to be very cold inside the S Hotel, but actually with the frigid temperatures outside, inside the S Hotel, the temperature is like 3, 4 below. So sleeping there is an experience. Both these destinations will impress a significant other with their experiences. So if a romantic snowmobile tour is on your list, look no further. But Quebec is not just about beautiful accommodations and culinary delights. The trail system is just as important for us sledders, and here Quebec has always impressed us. And they make a pretty nice walk, the groomer, because he passed two times a week for sure. And about the people, what they say, they say now this is really good one, because it's, it's really large, yep. because the groomer passes on the one way and back the other way. So you have more space for the snowmobile guys. And there's almost, also not many to wave to curbs, there's almost straight one. We do not stop, and we have not too many cross the road. And talking on the trail or so, they go to the Balbiza because it's a pretty nice place. Because we are read really differently to the other ride. Because the people just take home, you know, like make it comfortable. Okay? That's the reason we don't take too many people at the same time, just to feel really nice and relaxed. The list of great places in Quebec doesn't end there. Throughout the province, from the Gaspé to Lac Saint-Jean to Val d'Or to Saint-Donat, you can find excellence in the trails, accommodations, and food. The trifecta for the snowmobile adventure seeker. Coming up after the break, we've got more from some of our favorite destinations. Moving east once more, Atlanta, Canada is not often top of mind as one of Canada's great snowmobiling destinations, but it truly is. Blessed with deep snow that arrives early and stays late, along with spectacular views, Atlanta, Canada is a great way to extend the snowmobile season. In the past, I've ridden in each maritime province except for PEI and Nova Scotia, so those places are on my bucket list. And one place for sure I would go back to is Deer Lake, Newfoundland, the rock, to ride in Grossmorn and across the Gregory Plateau. That trip was amazing. The trails are white gold, and that's a, a phrase that was coined by the province and us uh, almost 20 years ago now. And even while uh, the rest of North America struggles for snow this winter, New Brunswick has had trails groomed and open for over four weeks. It's quite an honor. Anytime we have people come over and get on, jump on our trails, I think they're pretty impressed. I know we've worked hard the last 10 years to try to put something together here that's, that's second to nobody's, and, and we're getting there. Oh, beautiful trails here in Nova Scotia. In northern Nova Scotia, we have a uh, beautiful trail system. Cape Breton has uh, the most snow. Uh, they have a trail system that starts, their snow starts probably early December, goes till sometime uh, mid-April. There's another thing to be out here in northern Nova Scotia looking at the trail and, and seeing what we're doing. It was hard for us to settle on just one province or area in this spectacular maritime region. Anyone who has traveled anywhere in the area knows there's something special and welcoming about it. Each province has its own unique qualities when it comes to snowmobiling, from deep snow and tabletop trails to the remote wilderness of Labrador, where the Kane's Quest Adventure Race is held. Last, we're headed back west. 
Grizzly Lodge had us out last year to experience their version of backcountry alpine riding and it turned out to be one of my most memorable trips of the year. In fact, I even spent my own money to go back to Grizzly Lodge in April for the last ride of the season. Now we were the last two dudes in the lodge and enjoyed spring bluebird conditions. Grizzly Lodge isn't simply located just off the highway or next to a town. Instead, you have to ride into Grizzly, packing all your gear, so you need to be prepared for that. But with the lodge already up in the backcountry, it means you walk out of the lodge in the morning and ride right out of the compound. And despite this remote location, Grizzly still manages to prepare delicious chef-prepared meals three squares a day. The lodge also offers clients comfortable rooms with an awesome common area featuring pool tables, a lounge area, and bar. Just remember, if you ring the old shell casing, you'll buy around for everyone in the joint. Good times. As a snowmobiler myself, since I was uh, eight, nine years old, uh, I can't think of a season yet that I didn't have a sled and have ridden. And uh, today I still get giddy when I get on my sled and go for a ride. Uh, and that has really played into developing the business because I feel like I know what other snowmobilers want when they come to a place like this. All over Canada, we have great snowmobiling, and here at STV, we're going to continue to bring you these rides and experiences because our limits here are basically limitless. I know for me, there's tons more places I want to get to on my bucket list. So if you've got that favorite place or destination you like to ride or want to go to, tell us about it, and maybe we'll just join you. With the 2019 season just kicking off, remember to come back here each week for more adventures on snowmobiler television. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram either. Till next week, keep the rubber side down. STV has been brought to you by CKX. Wear your passion. On Snow Magazine, for snowmobilers, from snowmobilers.